Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by um, a technique called completing the square. And completing the square is a very handy technique to use, especially when you have um, a particular type of quadratic equation uh, and one that's not factorable. So before we can um, uh, actually use completing the square, we have to understand a little bit about um, some of these polynomials, in particular um, binomial squares and perfect square trinomials. So um, when we square a binomial, uh, whether you use FOIL or whether you use an area, uh, area method, um, basically you're saying x plus 4 times x plus 4. And as I model in the uh, area model, each one of these represents an area. x times x is x squared. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 4 is 16. Um, we have a leading term and a trailing term. Leading term is um, that's going to go uh, in front. The trailing term is going to go in the back. And the linear term, um, we add these two up because they are like terms. We combine like terms. 4x plus 4x gives us our linear, or some people call it the middle term. So um, uh, basically what we have here, is, if you notice, is that our linear term, right, is double whatever this 4 is. In other words, our linear coefficient is twice as big as this, and our constant over here is just whatever that uh, constant is squared, that second term in our binomial squared. So um, why we investigated that is because now we have to go backwards. I want to make some perfect square trinomials. That's kind of the key to uh, using complete the square to solve equations. So what I want to do, obviously I've given you here a binomial with a leading coefficient of 1, which we need for completing the square. And um, I want to make a trinomial, but not just any trinomial, I want to make a perfect square trinomial. And a perfect square trinomial, I need to add some number here to make this a perfect square trinomial so that I can replace it with a binomial square. That's the whole key to what I want to do in completing the square. So what's that number I'm going to add? Well, let's work backwards this time and know that if I'm going to take some binomial and square it to get to here, remember it's going to have to be entered into my little area model. So it's going to be x you know, plus or minus some number, which we don't know. Okay. Um, uh, that's going to be squared. Well, I know this one here, right? That's going to be x squared. But the thing is I don't know is these two. And 18 or 18x is what's going to give me the key. In other words, if I'm given that binomial and I have to look at the linear coefficient. And remember, these two here have to add up to 18 and they have to be the same. So in other words, I have to take this and divide it by 2 that will tell me what belongs here and here. So in this case, 18 divided by 2. I have the 9x and 9x. Of course, I would add those up to get to 18x. So if that is the case, what's going to go here? Well, for this to be 9x, it has to be x times something is 9. And that is, of course, 9. And this one has to be 9. So that tells me exactly the binomial um, that I need to use. Okay, so. The 18 told me the binomial, but it still hasn't answered this question, or, or has it? Uh, I have this 9 times 9, which is 81, so that would be the perfect square trinomial made by this binomial. So what I need to add to that binomial here is an 81. Now I have a perfect square trinomial that's equivalent to this binomial that's being squared. So why don't you give it a shot to see if you can figure out what to add here and here to make these perfect square trinomials. Go ahead. Okay, so um, uh, hopefully you saw the pattern uh, that we did before. And if I'm going to make a binomial where I um, look is right here. I take this linear uh, coefficient, I divide it by 2, and that gives me the binomial. It's going to be x minus 8 squared. And if I go ahead and square that binomial, my constant here will be 64. In other words, we, take, we cut this in half, gives me this, and I square this, and it gives me this. Down here, take the 12, cut it in half, 
or divide it by 2, I gives me negative 6, square it, 36. Okay, so now we're ready to solve some equations. Okay, please write down um, this equation. And what we're going to do is, um, this is not a factorable equation. We're going to attack this by using the uh, completing the square method. First step in completing the square will be to move the constant to the other side of the equation. Basically what I want to do is I'm going to subtract uh, 4 from both sides and I want to be able to set up or make room for my um, mystery number right here that is going to give me a perfect square trinomial. Now as we talked about um, before, what tells us what that could be is this uh, negative 6. So to complete the square what we're going to have to do is take that negative 6 divided by 2. Now that tells me what kind of binomial that's going to be squared. So when I square the binomial, I'll get a trinomial that has uh, that's x squared minus 6x plus 9. So this is exactly what I want. I want that perfect square trinomial that I can replace with this because if I can yay, I'll be able to use the square root method to solve the equation. However, when I add 9 to this side of the equation, I've changed the equation. The only way to me to uh, keep it valid is to balance the equation. If I add 9 to this side, I have to add 9 to this side. Negative 4 plus 9, I have a new equation that's equivalent to our initial equation. And now this one is a very easy equation to solve. We'll use square roots to solve it. In other words, we'll take the square root of both sides. Taking the square root of x minus 3 squared, this is basically an inverse operation that gets rid of this, leaving just x minus 3 behind. Taking the square root of 5, well, we have to consider both the positive and negative roots, and the square root of 5 is an irrational number, so we're just going to leave it plus or minus the square root of 5. Last thing is to get x alone. We have to be to both sides. We have two solutions x equals 3 plus root 5 and x equals 3 minus root 5 and it's common to write it in this form 3 plus or minus root 5 okay why don't you guys give that one a shot okay just like before um, we want to uh, solve this by completing the square so the first thing I'm going to do is make room for my magic number by subtracting 10 from both sides so we're going to move the constant to the other side making room for our number here that will make a perfect square trinomial because we want to solve by completing the square. All right, this is going to tell us the binomial we can use. We're going to divide this by 2 and we're going to have x plus 2 squared. x plus 2 squared, the, uh, the equivalent trinomial would have a constant of 16. Now I have an equivalent expression here except for the fact that I need to add my 16 to both sides. Adding these I get 6. Now I can solve using square roots. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of 6 is again irrational. We consider the positive and negative roots. Subtract 4 from both sides. Our solution is negative 4 plus or minus root 6. Okay, one more problem. Give it a shot. Okay, as before, we move the constant over to the other side, making room for our magic number. We're going to complete the square. We're taking that negative 12. We're going to divide it by 2 and square it, making a perfect square trinomial. And when, again, when we make that, we just want to be able to replace it with this. But to balance out the equation, we have to add 35 or 36 rather to both sides, getting us 32. Taking the square root of both sides. We get it down to here. Um, add 6 to both sides, and it looks like it's done. However, if you've learned how to simplify a radical, we will want to simplify that. And our final simplified solution is x equals 6 plus or minus 4 root 2. If you're following along in class, here are 8 homework problems. Please do those in um, a box 8 format. We'll see you.